Now we look now we look at chapter one, page seven. And that's another example about solving algebraic equations. This time we're looking at the cubic equation like so. And this short video will give you some ideas how we can approach to solving such equations. In, in, if you are unable to guess the roots, because most of the time when you look at the cubic equations, especially in this topic, you probably will be able to guess one of the roots. But if you can't, then the only way to do is, the, is to follow the method which I'm going to show you, and that's the method which is which belongs which 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 was first discovered by the Italian mathematician Giordano Cardano, although there are some suspicion that he stole this method, sort of stole it from another mathematician of his time, also Italian, uh, Tartaglia. Right, I draw your attention to the fact that actually this cubic equation is missing the square term. So you might argue that uh, the method which I'm going to show you doesn't work for any cubic equations. But in fact, if you did the little exercise which precedes this example on page 7, uh, you by now you should know that actually every cubic equation can be reduced down to equation like so. In fact, this particular type of cubic equations, which are missing square term, they have a special name. It's called depressed cubic. So, the, brilliance, the brilliant idea of Cardano or Tartaglia is just condensed in one single line. He suggests to look at this x, this unknown x we're looking for, as a sum of two other unknowns, u and v. u and v. So, in some sense, he just brings extra freedom to the, to the problem by introducing extra, extra unknown. Now, what he does is just substitutes this u plus v into the equation like so. So he says, let just go my u plus v cube, that's the something which corresponds to the first term, then goes 3 times u plus v, take 1 equals 0. Now, the next step, of course, we'll be using binomial expansion and expand this bracket. And that's what we do here. So binomial expansion gives me u cube, 3 u square v, plus 3 u v square, plus v cube. That's where we finished expanding this bracket with the help of bi uh, binomial, binomial formula. Now the rest of the formula is just the same as it was before. Now. If you look closely at this, you will realize that this field, these two terms, they have, they have. You can you can factorize them. You can, or in fact, you can factor out the common, common factor from here, like so. Three u v is a common factor, and the remaining part will be u plus v, u plus v, and that gives you the opportunity to use your factorization again because this bracket u plus v. And this bracket u plus v, they, they can be combined together. So look what happens now in the next step. Oh. Okay, I open it up already completely, so let's just look at what, what happened. You got u cube and v cube, which are these components, this u cube and this v cube. Now that's your common factor u plus v, which came from this expression and from this expression. And now when you take this common factor out, the remaining p will be 3 u v plus 3, that's this 3 u v, and this 3. Negative 1, still copy. Now, the second step in the brilliant idea of Cardano is just, he said, because we have this extra freedom, why don't we just now use this freedom by saying, let, let us look for u and v such that this bracket vanishes. So he just make an additional assumption that Free uv plus 3 equals 0. Well, if free uv plus 3 equals 0, then the whole thing here vanishes. And the remaining part of the equation turns into something like this. Well, all right then. So now, remember, we're looking for u and v, which are, that's the way they connected with my original unknown x. And my u and v now, subject to these two relations, this one and this one. In fact, this one, if I just transform this a little bit, I can rewrite it like this, u times v equal negative 1. 
Well, that's another opportunity to use what I call reverse Vieta's theorem, something we used in the preceding video. So look at this now. If I introduce these auxiliary variables x1 equal u cube and x2 equal v cube, then these two equations, these two, can be alternatively written like so x1 times x2 equal negative 1, that's the second, uh, that's, the, that's, that's, that's the variant of this one. If you cube it, it will be u cubed times v cubed equal negative 1, which in my, with, the, with, with, with my new variables will look precisely like, like so, x1 times x2 equal negative 1. And the second equation up here just turns into x1 plus x2 equal 1. And that's something which resembles a lot Vieta's theorem. And now I can say that x1 and x2, these are the unknowns, connected with the unknowns u and v, which in their turn connected with my original unknown x. But anyway, these unknowns x1 and x2, they must be roots of the quadratic equation. Which quadratic equation? Let's just go up in this upper right corner. This quadratic equation is the one which has unital highest coefficient, negative 1 for b, because sum here equal 1, and negative 1 for c, because product here equal negative 1. That's a very simple quadratic equation. We cannot, we cannot guess the roots of this, but we can use the formula for the solution of quadratic equation. Here's the formula. x1 and 2, the roots, these roots we're looking for, they are 1, that's for b, plus minus 1 again, plus 4, by 2. That's, 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 that's how we find roots of quadratic equation. Or if I simplify this, it's 1 half for the first part of this fraction, plus root 5 and 2 for the second part of this fraction. And now we can do all of the back substitutions we have to. For instance, we can say now that the u cube equal to one of these x's with plus, for instance, that's the back substitution from here. And now if you take the cubic root of it, you will have u itself equal 1 half plus root 5 and 2 cubic root. And you also back substitute with the v cube, which is 1 half negative root 5 and 2. That's the second solution from here. And when you take the cubic root, that's the one. Right, so remembering that x and u and u were connected like so, we can now say that my x is the sum of these two cubic roots. And that's one of the solutions of my original depressed cubic. How to find other solutions we'll see in the video that follows.